all them hot sun gotta clear them all out till there ain't none worth that tiger cat to death till the job's done and we do it all again through the sand beds and the muddy waters pushes old kid where just a little bit harder got my 990 pulling from making honest dollar it's good since all terrain Good sons all to rain. Good sons all to rain. You know, today. Being that Antonio's out of town this week, I've actually got my first chance to actually run, run the loader. You know, I've been in it, played with it before we bought it, but um, this super fast. I've, I haven't been in the loader that fast and never. And uh, of course, I'm going slow with it because it is so fast, but it's smooth, fast, and quiet. Um, Tiger Cat did a good job on that loader. It's, uh, it's remarkable, I mean, you can actually, had the motor wide open hold a, a, a cell phone conversation if you need to like on the tractors you can't do that but this loader right here you can do it it's really quiet and uh they've actually done good on the air the ac on them because if you if you look at the loader it ain't up with glass i mean the whole it's like in a bubble up there but when you turn that air conditioner on it keeps you cool so they did a good job on it and i'm uh i think it's been a good investment Still a good amount of wood on the ground, Bobby and the guys race to get the seven mile track buttoned up. Well, we're on the seven mile road back here cutting. Of course, we actually moved back here because uh, last year when it flooded and run us out of here, we was down on the Corbett track. And of course, when there's water three foot deep out here, you can't pick the mats up, you can't get the wood up. So we had to pull out and leave everything. And we left about 20 loads on the ground. So we moved back over here to try to get that cleaned up. But, uh, and Pim wanted his track cut, which is where the loaders are right now, is on uh, Pim's track. But we finally got the road straight. The road's good enough now that we can get back there. So we got one of the loaders to move back there this morning. And they're trying to get up all that dead wood. Well, it's pretty much dead now. It's been there seven months. But we're trying to get that cleaned up. And we got the new loader up here. And Antonio had to carry his son somewhere this weekend. So he won't be here this week. So I'm running the new loader right now. And I'm loading trucks as they come in. But we're trying to concentrate on getting that dead wood up down at the end which is the whole reason we came back here and it's been been here four weeks and we just got the road good enough we can go back there and get it. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, stay tuned and uh, find out how it goes. Hello, my name is Freddie. Run a bogey skitter. Waiting on some hoses to be brought to me now when I broke down. Yeah, I've been out here about close to 40 years now doing this off and on most of my life, working in the woods. Hard life and accidents happen. You gotta be on your toes all the time. Paying attention. Or to get you hurt. While out pulling wood, Freddie discovers a loss of pressure in one of the skitters. 
and without a replacement on hand, Justin takes a drive over to Regal Wood to filter some hydraulics. No draft. All the so, I mean, you know, all the other crap I got going on, and kids can pass it on. Third time generation, little old school salvation. Of course, I did fly on that little old helicopter that had Myrtle Beach in it. Where the last, where the last, where the last of the cowboys. 11 years ago, they delivered this tractor. Washers and Might look into that. Yeah, me too. Usually it'll turn pretty quick. You gotta react quick to me. So today is Friday. Uh, usually things are a little bit slower on Friday, so I try to try to work on a tractor, try to just keep up on stuff. And uh, Fred's tractor today had a few hoses leaking, um, so I went in and changed those. Uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt because you got to flip the cab over to get to them with steering hoses. Um, but uh, I got them changed, and hopefully it'll kind of cut down some of the oil consumption and. Because uh, everything is everything's going up in price right now. I think uh, buckets of oil have doubled in price 
since this new administration has come in so everything's everything's going up so we gotta stop some leaks and and just get tight <laughs> Well, that's all. That's all I need. That's all I need on this. Then what is he talking about? I don't understand what he's trying. What he's doing. What he's saying. All, all I need is a plug right there. Y'all, this is pretty much what we get when we just let the camera roll. There's a nephew. Wire. What's the what's, what's on the end of this wire? A plug. If yeah. it'll match up with a plug you got it shot. Yeah, it hooks straight to the motor. That's all we need. That's all we need. And it'd be so much simpler than redoing what everything. Is he Making that other one completely, make it work. Awkward. Take all of it off and make all of that work. I don't know. What I'm talking about be the simplest. Pulled some of this out of these tires too. These are horseshoe nails? Oh, horseshoe nails. They put them in old houses where they, on the outside where they put the siding on it. That's what they use. And they use it inside on walls. And Is not. there a duffer there on 421? Big one. There are four things that are guaranteed in southeastern North Carolina. That's heat, humidity, rain, and mosquitoes. No matter where you go, you will get one or more of the above. Although the rain doesn't slow the guys down, it is guaranteed to make one's day extremely uncomfortable. Hey guys, I, I, I wanted to uh, let y'all know something. Uh, which I was there by myself and there really wasn't any way to film it. But uh, we bought these big old ropes because of y'all. All my viewers, we had when Monkey's truck got messed up, everybody started telling us about these Yankum ropes. I've never heard of them. And actually, you can see that big red one on the back back there. We keep it on the motor grader to pull out the big trucks. But I was at the shop the other day, and we got the forklift stuff. And my son has got a four-wheel drive Master Ferguson tractor. It's not a great big one, but it's a they're bigger than a lawnmower. Couldn't even shake it. And I got in that night with my pickup. Me and my brother went down there, Mike, and we hooked to it. And it's that inertia, whatever it builds up in that thing when you when you snatch it or jerk it. It, it, it pulled that it pulled it right out like it wasn't nothing. I mean I had to jerk on it, but it, it pulled it right out. And the sky has opened up on us, but I did want to let y'all know that we're on the seven mile road right now and we are got about a maybe a week left here. We're finishing up and uh, we got another nice track to go to. It's um, they call it the blueberry track, but it's 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 over twenty thousand acres and um, hopefully we can get in there and stay there as long as we'd like, but it's, it's got a good mix of pine and hardwood, and that's where our next move is, hopefully, if nothing don't come up. But, uh, but I look forward to seeing y'all guys over there once we get there. Well, today is Friday, and the guys have moved off the Seven Mile Road onto the Oceanic Track. The loads are going out like a well-oiled machine. Yeah, this is how things are supposed to work. Right before lunch, Raul discovers a small leak in one of the hoses in the grapple head. Raul has only been on the loader a few months and has become extremely efficient on it. Yep, looks like the hose got chafed pretty bad. Good to talk with you again. It's like it's been a while, but um, I want to talk to you a little bit about Pecky Cypress. Out here in the, in the Cape Fear River, we're not in the river, but in the swamp, I don't know when it was, you know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, when these guys cut this timber back then, 
anyway, I don't know why the trees were left or what the circumstances were, but since we've been out here cutting this wood here, we have come across several cypress trees, you know, some three or four feet diameter. And you can see the ax cuts on it where they chopped them down with an ax back in the day. Well, we've got these out and we've actually got a good load of them. We carried the Turnbull. And what I want to do is this, anybody that's interested in like pecky cypress or, or that old kind of cypress stuff like that, if you'll get up with, uh, contact me or Turnbull Lumber Company, we've, we've got probably seven or 8,000 board feet of it right now. Uh, that he's he which we ain't sawed it yet, but he's going to saw it pretty soon But if you're anybody's interested in that stuff, give me a call and um, we'll make a deal with it but um, Yeah, every now and then we've run across some of it and we've got a few more pieces here I don't know if it's enough for a whole load yet, but but we'll see and, and we're actually finishing up on this track down here on the seven mile road um, It's been a good track, you know, we've been in here for Well, I guess about about over 20 25 years now cutting and there's, there's two more tracks of wood left. One is uh, Turnbull's track and the other one is one of Corbett's tracks. And then everything that you see standing around us now is stuff that we cut, you know, 20, about 21, 22 years ago when Fran and Bertha hit and it just blowed down a bunch of wood. So we've come back now and cut everything we didn't cut then. So we still got a stand growing here and I'm sure Pim's gonna go back out there and plant whatever uh, the Forest Service tells them. But uh, it's the end of a, a good run for us out here. We're gonna miss it, but uh, we got a little bit more to cut. I don't know when they want to cut it though, but y'all stay tuned. it doesn't get much better than this for fall it could be a little cooler fall has should be here already but it's not um, but at least it's dry we had one big rain event a couple of weeks ago and that kind of knocked us back for a loop but uh, we're we're recovering um, I think we've got maybe a week or a week and a half at this site and then we go back to Hallsboro. Uh, crew's not really looking forward to that due to travel time. They've got a hour and a half travel time one way. Uh, that's three hours a day they don't get paid for. And uh, it makes for a long work week. But uh, anyway, we gotta, gotta go where the wood is. Anyway, it's been good here while it's lasted, and we will be back. It's not all gone, but uh, we'll be back. That might be their Christmas track when we get through at Hallsboro. Bobby and the crew wind down on the Oceanic track, the count is in. They have removed 
117 loads off the track this week. That means been a long something. time coming. Yeah. You know, I think the last time we got it is when we, right if we got the new truck. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, dear God, for being so good to us. Thank you, dear Lord, for keeping us all safe this past week. Thank you, dear God, for introducing the men. God, it's been a long time coming, dear Lord, but I want them to appreciate. I want them to know that I appreciate their help, and I thank you, dear God, for letting it happen. I pray that I pray that you bless the food we're about to have in your son's question that we pray. Oh no, she didn't do that. What's that? She didn't give us nothing to eat with. Oh yeah. She right. said she well, had I got a utensils in my coat, I ain't worried about it. <laughs> she said, oh, we got you all packed up. Spoon or four? TV dinners. <laughs> well mine's going to the beast this coming week. <laughs> I didn't do it. He said steadfast the whole time. No, they ain't gonna have, they ain't gonna have. Did all the men sign this? He got damn bit of backbone. Half a miles on them too. They wore down pretty darn good. I swear they, 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 they don't get it. I have to go back and look at it because I don't want to know. You check it? Yeah. I didn't know. Uh, I mean, you're real cool. I don't know. What, what, what do you want to do? We've had some comments here lately about the logging industry, about us destroying the forest and uh, you know killing these trees out here that that puts off oxygen. It's a misconception there. When a, a tree is just like a person, it's got a lifespan. When a tree is young, like all these trees we cut 20 years ago, the trees are young. They're growing they are like a sponge they're sucking up water they're, they're, they're sucking in carbon dioxide they're putting off oxygen when the tree gets older all that slows down i mean yes we can let the, the, the old tree sit there and grow to they die and, and fall down the woods and then all everything they sucked up all the carbon dioxide they sucked up it goes right back in the atmosphere again so we're utilizing it you you, you take the old trees out you let the new tree grow and good example a teenager you take a teenager boy you cannot feed him enough food when he's growing now once you get old like me you get fat when you eat but a teenager they're constantly burning it off and you got to keep replenishing it same thing with a tree when the tree's young they're going to suck up a lot more carbon dioxide and put off a lot more oxygen than an old tree it's just a cycle of life we're not destroying anything we're taking these trees out to be used for furniture a, a thousand different things and new trees are being planted. Well, in hardwood, actually, you don't have to even plant them. They will spread off the same stump and grow again. Pine trees, people, you know, want different kind of pine trees, and they'll plant them. Uh, we have been in some places where 
the guys at Planted Back Cypress, because Cypress is a more valuable tree than your standard gum tree, but that's up to the landers, you know, the, the landowner's deal. He can do whatever he wants to, but if you don't want to spend the money to replant it, none of this trees, none of this on the seven mile road was replanted. All this is natural growth that you see, and it's standing as thick as hair on a dog's back. I mean, it's just natural. God takes care of the earth. I mean, so anyway, I hope, Send your questions about that. Uh, I'd I love to debate you on it, but we're not destroying anything. This is not deforestation. Strip malls, housing projects, stuff like that, that is deforestation. Because once you put that strip mall there, a tree ain't going there anymore. This right here is not deforestation. This is just using what God gives us. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. We're at the end of it. We're on the end of the seven mile track or what we're gonna cut for now um, which is we've had some good weeks here and we'll probably be finished here Smith we moved Smith truck we moved the cutter out today Friday and the guys are probably be here till Wednesday or Thursday cleaning up getting everything fixed back and then we're going back to Hallsboro um, so y'all stay tuned and see what goes on at Hallsboro maybe we'll have some trucks this time and um, if you hadn't subscribed please do and send your comments and hit that like button Thank you.